Hey there everyone, welcome back to the Beamer Barn. Today we are not doing a tutorial. I'm not recommending that you follow my lead because we're doing something that I need to practice and work on and that is my painting skills. I finally decided to invest into my first paint gun and today we're gonna be trying it out on my E46 wagon and we have to turn a white fender matching black. So come along with me on the journey and let's see if we can get this thing looking pretty good. So right here we have everything that we're gonna be using today to paint, including my gun here. I'll put a link to this one in the description below. It's from Amazon. It's a very budget friendly gun. I think it's like under $50, but you do need to combine it with some other parts like this air water separator right here and also a pressure regulator with a gauge right there. Uh, but otherwise it comes as a complete gun with a 1.4 millimeter nozzle for spraying here and also this uh, hopper. But this loading carriage I had to buy separately. This is like $12 at Harbor Freight. Here are some rags that I have. These we're gonna use to clean the surfaces, some strainers when we're gonna be pouring the paint. Here's some primer that I had to buy, sandable primer, bought it in a can, so it should save us a little bit of time that way we don't have to load it in our paint gun. But everything from this line over is gonna be our paint supplies that I actually bought at the store. This was actually like 10 bucks, so we'll put that aside. But this right here total was about $135 in supplies. So it's a little bit more expensive than I'm used to paying when I buy like a pre-mixed can. But what I've been told is that the paint quality is gonna be a ton better, the clear coat quality Quality. And also since we're doing a two stage, we're gonna have a lot more protection from having a nice clear coat on here. So this is UV resistant clear coat. This is the activator on top with the uh, can right here. I think this is like a quart. And uh, I only bought one can of activator, although for the full quart you might need two. But I figure we're not gonna use all of it. So I don't want the activator to go bad because it will go bad pretty quickly once you open the cap right here. Here is our Schwartz 2 paint. This is paint code 668. They mixed it for me on the spot and this is just about eight ounces. And then here's our reducer. So we have a slow reducer here. The uh, temperature's been really hot here in Florida lately. So the slow reducer is gonna give it a more slow drying time and it's gonna be mixed one to one, which is gonna be a little bit different depending on uh, which paints you're using. So some paints require like a two to one base coat to reducer mix. So definitely uh, read the instructions, talk with the paint shop that you're buying your supplies from and they'll definitely help you out. So uh, shout out to Ben's Paint Supply. They, they mix all this PPG paint. Uh, I bought one of these cups right here and uh, I can't wait to start painting and just practicing. So let's go ahead and pull the fender off of my E46 wagon first and then we're gonna prep it and get into it. So we've got the fender off and I started cleaning it already with some uh, degreaser just to get the dirt off. But I should probably tell you guys, my plan for this is gonna be to paint as much as possible of this fender to make it look OEM. And what's great is that since we have the base coat clear coat, we're gonna be able to paint the inner parts of the fender like this that will match the engine bay just with the clear coat. And that way it won't have as much gloss as the outside of the car, which does have clear coat. I also wanna to try to get some of these areas just to make sure that it has full coverage and that this fender doesn't look like it's 
it's been repainted before, although obviously it has. So we're gonna do the best job that we can with the materials that we have and hope that it comes out real nice. But for now, we need to grab our uh, prep pad. I think we might try maybe a sander, maybe some scuffing pads. We really just need to get all the gloss out of this surface and get it 100% clean. And then we can use something like mineral spirits or surface prep uh, to make sure that there's no more oils on here. So let's go ahead and get sanding. So as you can tell by the whole bunch of white powder all over my hands, I do have a crippling addiction, although it's not what you think, I just love building cars. So now after all that sanding, we're done with this fender. I think we're ready to start with the primer. Um, I did go a little bit low in some areas, as you can see down to the metal, um, but I don't think that's gonna be a problem. I just wanted to make sure that it was really flattened out in some of the areas that had like little chips. Like here, there were definitely a couple chips, but since we went down to the, you know, the metal basically, it should be 100% flat so you won't see it once it's painted. Now the next thing that we need to do is clean the fender with this paint thinner. I also have some of these painting and cleaning rags here so these don't leave any debris behind when you are wiping something down. So it's really important to have because something like a microfiber can leave little fibers behind. And I also need to mask off the little black piece right here. I guess it's not that important since the fender is gonna be black and this is already black plastic, but we're gonna try to mask that off there so that it doesn't get any overspray. Now, besides having our electric fan set up, I'm gonna open the garage door so we have plenty of ventilation. And then I'm gonna spray some water on the ground here so that any overspray that lands on the ground doesn't, you know, paint our floor, but also so that any of the existing dirt on the ground doesn't easily get picked up from us just walking around. So those are two very important steps that we're gonna take as precautions. And the last thing that we need to do is get this fender set in a position where we can uh, hopefully prime it, but without getting our fingerprints all over it. So with a little bit of uh, movie magic, as they say, there we are. Well, it's uh, hung up here in the middle of the garage by my garage door opener assembly. And you know what, long term, I probably should just find a stud here and get one of these things bolted in so I can just hang multiple items at once maybe. Um, but we also masked off the black trim up here. And I'd say that this gives us enough good access that we can paint all of the uh, exterior pieces with the base coat and the uh, primer well and just have access to the whole thing. It might be a little tricky from the bottom, uh, but that's actually one of the pieces that you're not gonna see at all. And now all that we have to do is clean this thing up with some rags and then let's do some primer.
We've laid our primer down and it's now flashing or drying as they call it. And once it does dry, we, you know, we need to give it like 10 or 15 minutes. When it, once it does dry, we will check and see that it's a perfectly smooth uh, surface for us to paint over. Cause of course, this is basically our last chance to get a nice smooth fender before we lay paint on it. So we wanna make sure we don't have any high spots, low spots. Um, there's some stuff that we're not gonna be able to control like uh, you know some of the chips that were in the fender before. I could grab some skim coat and go ahead and fill that in, but I don't think it's gonna be super noticeable after paint and gloss. But um, yeah, I'm excited to get some paint on here. We just gotta let it dry. Moments later. So this looks to be almost dry. It'll probably be ready in a couple of minutes. So we might as well start mixing our paint. Like I said, here is our base coat and here is our reducer. This is mixed to a one-to-one -one ratio. So over here on our measuring cup, we'll see the one mark, and then we're gonna fill it up to the other one mark right here if we want one-to-one. -one. Uh, since we have, we're probably gonna do like four ounces, half of what we have, we'll do to the two mark, which is four ounces, and then we'll do the reducer to the two mark here. So you're gonna see in a second me mix it, and then we're gonna load it into our paint gun. But before I do that, I'm also gonna clean the paint gun, which is why I have some of this paint gun cleaner right here. So we'll spray this all over, disassemble it, just make sure it's 100% clean, no dust in there. And then we'll be able to load the hopper and get spraying. two coats in uh, this gun it really is really different than spraying with a spray can like it comes out a lot more aerated a lot wider and it it feels like it dries uh, quicker I actually got a little too trigger happy up here on the corner you can see the base coat still drying and I have a little bit of runs there so I definitely just went a little too heavy in this corner because I knew I, I, I needed to go a little bit heavier but not that heavy obviously so it's still a little bit glossy because it's drying, but once it's fully dried, it's gonna go back to like a satin finish. I think I'm going to have to sand that down, uh, maybe with like a 2000 or a 3000 grit sandpaper. And then we'll uh, load up the gun with a little bit more paint because we're empty. And once we get that corner done, we'll be able to move on to clear coat. So I may have gone a little bit overboard with the uh, sanding because I, I just want to make sure that we got a flat spot out of that 
uh, that run right there. And then I, you know, I just saw a couple of uh, little minor imperfections in the paint. I kind of just worked my way over and then just got lost in it and did the whole fender. So all of it needs to be uh, repainted now, but hopefully we'll get a really nice look out of this fender. Uh, I, I already like how the paint looks. It looks awesome, actually. I think that uh, this paint color would be great on the car if it was like a frozen color um, but anyways we'll get the clear coat on it after we get another layer of base so i'm going to mix up some base coat and then we're going to spray it again and hopefully we'll get some clear on after that and then hopefully this thing will be looking good So after about, I think, three coats of just trying to get this thing coated, man, th this is very, very different. I'll tell you, this is super different than spraying with an aerosol can because you just get much wider of a spray and you can spread the molecules more and they're also much smaller. So they lay on a lot better. And really the base coat when it was running, that was like my fault. But you can see over here that you almost can't tell where where it was running because the clear coat has really evened it out and the paint is just so deep, such a deep black that it uh, it really just, you know, it sinks in. Um, you will immediately notice though, there is a lot of shit in the paint. So uh, I just don't know what it's from. Maybe you guys can give me some help here. Um, is this something in my gun or is this from having the garage door open and letting you know contaminants get in here? Obviously, uh, I should probably try to figure out a better setup where I would have filtered air coming in and then somewhere for the air to go out. So anyways, yeah, I'm not sure what this is in the paint, but you know, I think we might be able to pull it out with some wet sanding and compound you know, buffing. So obviously we can't do that right now. The paint is still drying, still curing. Uh, I think you're supposed to wait on average like one or two weeks before you get into wet sanding clear coat like this. Uh, but the places where there isn't any like debris in the paint, the orange peel looks super good. The clear coat went on great. I got a little bit on my arms and it stuck the hairs together. Uh, but man, it lays on great. It dries great. 
Um, it's a lot easier and, and it feels more sticky than like the aerosol stuff. So I, I am by far impressed with the experience. I think I do just need to dial in my painting setup and maybe my technique as well. Um, obviously, I think, like I said before, we need to get something so we can uh, suspend things a little bit better at better angles. Um, but otherwise, man, I'm, I'm happy with how this came out. Like I said, we'll probably just install it on the car and then uh, wet sand it later to get it really nice and flat. And you know, I'm, I'm currently out of base coat, so I can't try again. I have a little bit left, but I was thinking that we'd use that to touch up some of the uh, rock chips on the hood. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna dump another $45 in base coat to try to get this done again, but uh, we do have extra clear coat, so I think I know where we're gonna be able to use that pretty soon. So stay tuned for another episode where we're gonna be using that clear coat for a really cool project. The gun over here, you can see, it definitely accumulated some moisture. So this needs to be purged here, and I think probably just needs to be emptied, dried out. And uh, the gun is 100% is clean now. We used our, uh, our gun cleaner spray, which was really easy. I would recommend that stuff to you guys because it makes it easy to just spray in rather than having to use like a liquid and put it on a rag and get it in all the little tight spots. So check out this spray. I'll try to put a link to it down in the description below. Like I said, along with some of the parts that I used here to assemble my gun. But again, I, I just, I wanted to experiment and try out this technique. I do see how fun this is. And I think that I would love to try painting a whole car, but obviously we need to figure out a better booth system or some way to avoid getting debris in the paint. So now it's the end of the video and I know I probably shouldn't do this, but I'm gonna throw the fender on in a second. I just wanna say thank you for watching the video. I hope you guys enjoyed watching me learn to do something new. And if you're trying to uh, get into painting, I would really recommend it. It's a ton of fun and it's worth it getting a gun considering that you do have to invest into it, but you're gonna be able to lay down much better paint. And when you consider that you know you just have to buy a base coat for when you're gonna be painting something, uh, the base this coat's actually pretty cheap compared to buying the aerosol cans. So I would really recommend looking into getting a gun if you're interested in doing this. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Go ahead and leave a like or a comment down below. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and you haven't yet. And as always, I hope everyone has an amazing day. Let's go ahead and throw this fender on the E46 and I'll show you guys some final shots so that we can see if the paint matches or not. And fingers crossed, I, I really, I really hope it looks good. So let's do it.